In this video, we'll take a look at some features of Google Calendar. Specifically, we'll see how Calendar can be used to keep track of events such as lessons, tests, or meetings. To access your calendar from your main Google landing page, click the dots to open the apps and choose Calendar. By default, your calendar opens in a view displaying the current week. Today's date is highlighted in gray. Any calendar events you have will be marked in their time slots, and I can switch weeks with these arrows. Because one of my default calendars is Holidays in the United States, any national holidays, such as Memorial Day, are marked as well. This holiday doesn't have a time slot because it's an all-day event. I can change the view to show the current day or the current month. Schedule view shows all upcoming events in list form. Your Google account starts with one default calendar, but you can add more calendars, say for different classes or for school-wide events. Click the gear icon, then choose Settings. Here you can set your time zone and location, world clock, your default event duration and guest settings, how you want calendars displayed, and more. The last settings are for mobile alerts, in which you can have text reminders sent to your cell phone. But if you have the Google Calendar app on your phone, these alerts will pop up automatically. On the left side, back up at the top, choose Add Calendar, then New Calendar. I'll set up one new calendar for my Period 1 History class. And I'll add a second calendar for Period 2 English. Both new calendars now appear on this settings list, along with my original default calendar. Each calendar has its own color, and I can change the settings for each calendar. One important thing you'll want to look at is access permissions. You won't want your calendars available to the public, and you can decide whether you want your calendars available to everyone in your school or organization. Sharing is different. You'll want your calendars shared with the correct sets of people. You can specify email addresses or enter a Gmail group, such as a group you've set up for a class. For each person or group you add for sharing, you'll need to decide how much control they'll have over your calendar events. The most restrictive setting means that people can only see when you're busy or free. Or you can have your calendar set to view only, or people can make changes to events, or manage both changes and sharing. You can also set how or whether you'd like to get event notifications. If you want to remove a calendar, say for when a class is over at the end of a school year, that option is at the very end of the settings list. The color dots here will help you identify which events are part of which calendar. To see this, leave the settings page to get back to the main calendar. Here's the list of all my calendars. I can click this three dot icon to get a list of new colors to choose from. I can also choose whether to display only this calendar or to hide it, and I can also access this calendar settings from here. To add an event, simply click in the correct spot for day and time and enter the event details. From the drop down menu, choose which calendar the event is for. Then click Save. The event appears in its color. Once an event is listed, you can extend or reduce its time, or drag and drop it to a new time slot. Another way to add an event is by clicking this red plus sign, though you'll have to specify the date and time. You can make further changes by clicking on the event and clicking the pencil icon. You can specify a location, include attachments, add notifications, or invite people who aren't already on your sharing list. If a particular event is recurring, you can set that here. For example, if this Friday quiz happens weekly at the same time, I can set that and the event will appear every Friday. Switching to month view shows the recurring event. If your calendar view becomes overloaded with events from multiple calendars, you can simplify your view by turning on and off calendars here. And finally, if you need to view other calendars, such as a coworker schedule, or religious holidays, you can add more calendars here. In this example, I'm adding the calendar for phases of the moon, which appears here in its color.